G'day, I'm Ted Jednak, creator and facilitator of the internationally acclaimed and accredited foot mobilisation workshops, published author and founder and director of the Foot and Leg Centres in Australia. I help health practitioners just like you master new treatment options so that you can enjoy better clinical outcomes. It's all about giving you effective tools that fix the problems you see in your clinic every single day. I'm really excited about this blog, which was prompted by a question I get asked pretty regularly, and that is, can FMT help proprioceptively challenge kids? You know, the kids that seem to be a bit, or a lot, unco, a bit of slang for uncoordinated. For the purposes of this blog, I'm going to focus on children who, for all intents and purposes, are neurologically healthy. However, when it comes to their gait, they just seem to trip up or fall over more than their peers. You know the kids I'm talking about? Heck, it doesn't seem like that long ago when I was one of them, uh, but I digress. By the way, if you're wanting a complex discussion that delves into the neurological imbalances, switch off now because we're not going that way, Sparky. As I said, this is about children who are neurologically healthy. Uh, just last week, we had a classic case. Jessica, bright 10-year-old, recently took up ballet and calisthenics, which she loves. However, Jessica spent most of her time in tears, frustrated because she couldn't keep up with her friends. Uh, Jessica's mum always thought that her daughter was a bit, well, unco, but you know, the problem was highlighted when Jessica began ballet earlier this year. Jessica's conscientious mum had taken her to the GP, the physio, to see if anything could be done. And, well, in mum's words, she felt like she was overreacting to an imaginary problem. What Jessica and her mum really wanted was for her to be able to enjoy physical pursuits without falling, scraping her knees and being humiliated. During my biomechanical assessment, I noticed that Jessica's foot posture rated fairly poorly. I also noticed that she struggled with some pretty basic balance tests. The thing that really concerned me was a noticeable incongruence with her talus within the ankle mortis. Now, describing her as having weak ankles was certainly accurate. At this point, it's important to understand, as health practitioners, we need to know some neuroanatomy and how this affects patients' postural coordination. Now, look, neuroanatomists will tell us that there are three primary sites in the body that have the greatest concentration of mechanoreceptors. These three regions coordinate with each other and the brain to keep us upright, mobile, and adapting to the surfaces we're on. The three areas are, one, TMJ, which is important for keeping our head and eyes level. Two is the sacroiliac joint, which is important for keeping our hips and pelvis level. And three, the subtalar joint, which is crucial for facilitating the feet to adapt to the Earth's surface and giving us a stable foundation. Have you ever heard of the field of chirodontics? It's the combination of chiropractors, dentists, and podiatrists working together to enable these three anatomical regions to functionally function as effectively as possible. It's fascinating stuff. Now, I mention this because of the significance the mechanoreceptors around the subtalar joint and their role in proprioceptive functioning. In other words, they play a key role in our postural coordination. I came to the conclusion that Jessica's postural coordination was compromised by mechanical dysfunctioning of the talus and the subtalar joint. Now, it's interesting to note that Jessica had orthotic therapy and had benefited from orthotics for a number of years. But the problem was that her ballet and calisthenics footwear wouldn't facilitate her orthoses. So what we did was mobilize Jessica's talus and the associated joints to restore the position of the talus within the ankle mortis. This was done in conjunction with some very specific balancing exercises. By combining these two highly effective strategies in a very specific way, we could restore the communication pathways between Jessica's brain and the muscles in her lower limbs. A key element of Jess's treatment was the exercise plan. Now, physios will tell us that you know, one of the biggest challenges that they have with their patients is the level of compliance with prescribed exercises. It's no different for us, is it? The solution to overcoming this hurdle is twofold. First, you've got to make sure that the exercises are simple to master. And second, encourage the exercises to be done at the same time that something's already happening regularly. In other words, include the exercises with your patient's daily routines. We've found that cleaning teeth, uh, shower times, and bed times are the easiest and most convenient routines to link to. With kids, though, making exercises fun also really helps for compliance. For example, a, six, a simple trick I often use is toilet humour. <laughs> kids love it. So do I. <laughs> anyway, for a, a foot strengthening exercise like heel raise, I'll suggest to kids that every time you need to go for a wee, <laughs> I said wee. Okay, so whenever you go for a wee, go to the bathroom walking on your tippy toes. That's it. 
just give kids that instruction and your compliance rate will go up dramatically. Pretty cool, huh? I wish someone at university taught me that. It would have really helped me. I mean, with my patients, not with... Anyway, with Jess, we began a treatment plan of mobilizing the tailors posteriorly because it was anti displaced anteriorly and we had to work it back home. This was done on a weekly basis for six visits. The key service we included with Jess was the impactor. This is an instrument that stimulates the mechanoreceptors so they can tell the brain what's going on around the subtalar joint. And then the brain goes, oh, okay, I'll tell the relevant muscles to wake up and get on with working properly. You see, the impactor instrument targets the type 3 mechanoreceptors predominantly. And that's because the speed of the force from woe to go is 17 milliseconds. Now, a skilled therapist applying a, a high-velocity thrust will take around 220 milliseconds, if they're really good. So an impactor is way faster than it is humanly possible. And that's why the type 3 mechanoreceptors respond to it. It's a bit like an alarm clock for the mechanoreceptors that have you know, gotten a bit lazy or have developed some inefficient habits. The impactor helps to wake up the nerves, and that makes the gait retraining exercises more effective too. Once Jessica began to get more stable and was able to balance more effectively, we started weaning her off from us. In other words, from, she was coming weekly, and then she came in fortnightly, and then monthly, and now Jess we see her every three months for a proprioceptive top-up to make sure she hasn't slipped into any uh, bad habits. And now Jessica's a star. Her rate of falls has improved around 80% according to her mum, and they're both really looking forward to the end-of-year concert. So, in summary, the things you've learnt or you need to remember from this blog are 1. Clumsy kids who don't have any neurological pathology can be effectively helped. 2. Subtalar joint has one of the greatest concentration of mechanoreceptors in the whole body. 3. A displacement of the talus, which is pretty common, can have a direct effect on the level of coordination children and adults experience. Four, the treatment to reset the talus to its optimum position is really important. Five, stimulating the mechanoreceptors with an impact instrument targets the type 3 mechanoreceptors that a manual therapy thrust just can't match. Six, get yourself an impactor or an activator or an adjusting tool, whatever trade name they go under, and use it for your patients who are not as well balanced as you like. Now, I don't mean mentally imbalanced, but... Then again, seriously, I found the patients who were at the ends of the age spectrum, from the very young to the elderly, responded really well to mechanoreceptor stimulation. It's kind of like the icing of the cake. Your treatment plan is the cake, and you top it up with the icing, the impactor. Just this morning, uh, Lindsay Morrison sent, uh, from the UK sent me a message saying, I had no idea these amazing tools were available. Really thrilled to have been able to open your world, Lindsay. I trust this blog has, been, blog has been useful to you. Thanks very much for sticking with me to the end. Hey, look, if you're watching this on YouBook uh, or FaceTube, please hit the like button if this information has been helpful to you. And if you think a colleague would benefit from hearing this stuff, please share it with them because it means that they'll be able to consider more options for their patients with balance problems. Until next time, serve with spirit, consult with care, and make an impact today.